Nah, so I, I just saw something on someone's story. It says, in a relationship, how many times should you and your partner have sex a week? Everything has to be numbers with this generation, bro. Bro, ah, oh, it's the generation of numbers. Bro, bro. Do you know what I mean? How much, sex how as much as you want, bro, as little as you want. How many months until you cast? You celebrate, how many do whatever months you until want. you marry? How, how much should you spend on a vacation date? Should when's I... the talking stage okay? When is it not okay? How long I'm should tired. it be? Oh bro. my goodness, I'm tired. Do what you want, man. Do what you want. But separately, oh, answer that question. <laughs> so answer, that, answer that question, though. Like, oh, I don't even know. I don't know. It depends on how my drive is at the time. Like, so I, bro, I can have a week where I'm I'm packed in. Yeah, like, I can I can have a week where don't I'm. Touch me, man. <laughs> and I, it's not even that. I might just be tired from work, bro. Like, like, listen, I see you looking fine yeah. and that with you know you try and you're doing your little temperature stuff, yeah. but I'm cooked. Yeah, no. I've been coding since. Hey, have you ever been like being tired and then? Letting one off isn't. It, it's not the same. That, that could finish it's, you. It's, 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 ah. <laughs> no, it's but like, I'm saying, like, you might sleep for 12 hours straight. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's that either, tiredness will hit it's your It's either you'll conk out immediately, <laughs> or it's, it's one of them ones where it's like, let me just do it for the sake of doing it. Or like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think you, you should ever that, be. That, that one is like a. Mm. Yeah, that one. It's like, it's, like, it's like red cap milk. What's the point? It's like, it's not worth what we're doing here. Yeah. So why am I doing it? That's horrible, man. Yeah, I think, but I, I think, can't lie, maybe once once a week is a bit, is all right, still. Yeah. Healthy, it's not too much where it's becoming, yeah. you know, obsessive. Yeah. It's all right, because, you know, I'm not saying you have to have a certain day and a certain time, like, oh, 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 drop them. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. But I think once a week is all right, though. Yeah, whatever Keep... fits in your schedule, if you can do two, three. Yeah, man, after a cheeky little date night on a Friday night mm. or Saturday night, you know what I mean, end the night well, wake up. Breakfast in bed on a Sunday morning before you go to church. That's royal. Don't know about that last bit, but anyway. What do you mean? All right, all right, all right. What's <laughs> up before you go to church? Anyway. All right, all right, no, I, all said, right. I said you have breakfast in bed before church. And then what happens after that? You go to church. Oh, okay. okay. Just making sure. Oh, you what I meant? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> technically, though. What? Wait, technically, like, if we're married. Land it, man. If we're married land, and we have land sex, your foot, land your foot. no, but once you're married, sex no longer becomes a sin. I guess so. But like, right? One day you can't just like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> man, you so can't you, wait till after. Like, man said, you go to church, the, the girl's hair's all messy. Uh, man uh, said, no, no, no. I think obviously, I don't know. I think no, but yeah. Once you get married, sex is no longer a sin. Okay. I think so that's what you're on. That's what you're on. No, judging. I'm not saying I'll do it straight before church, but I'm saying like mm. if I was married and I were mm. to do that, yeah, you would I'd, feel guilty about it. I don't. I don't. Right, there's a. I've. Uh, do you know what I mean? The covenant yeah. is there. Yeah, Two yeah. bodies are now one. Like it's. Okay. I, I think. I think I'm good. I guess so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, that's the angel letting you in. Right? <laughs> But I said, Paul, you have to understand. You have to understand, please. I'm just so mad. <laughs> Listen, she woke up on a mad thing like, you know, I'm gonna get the morning rise and shine. So I had to, I had to shine, bro. Like, you're not trying to see man shine. That's my angel. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just be like, yep. <laughs> man said, yeah. You cooked, buddy. You cooked. You're finished. <laughs> Nah, uh, cool. Yeah, all right, 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 all right. Yo, my people, welcome back to another episode of the Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. Today's all I'm joined by... Mid MB. I hope you guys are doing well. Before we get stuck into the today's episode, be sure to leave a like on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, leave a rating on your podcast platform that you use. And yeah, get stuck in with another episode with the mandem. Today, how are we starting, bro? Got some hit blunts to you today. Okay. Uh, the first one is the creepiness of a spider is roughly proportional to its legs length to its torso length ratio. So, like, you know daddy long legs? Yeah. They look crazy, but they don't, they're not poisonous. But, like, if you see, like, a small one that's poisonous, you'll be more scared of the daddy long legs. 
Oh yeah, because the legs are on a mat. Oh. Yeah, like it just looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but if it's got too many legs, it's like ew. even a spider. I've seen some hench spiders. Okay, I'm not talking about hench. I'm talking about how long their legs are. When their legs are long. Yeah, but even even the spiders that are just black, like pitch black, and the the, the legs is like uh no, twenty millimeters yeah, in depth. Yeah, yeah. And it's just black and hairy, bro. Like yeah. I've seen some of them like in the corner. I'm like, yo, if I if I Time this swatting a bit off. You're Spider Man. I see a Miles Morales. <laughs> but that's how stuff that happens to black people, bro. Yeah, I know. And even if it does, Miles Morales is a cartoon. Yeah. I'm not trying to live in that dimension. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say? So I think, yeah, it's a bit. Mm. Mm. I hear what you mean, though. Yeah. I hear what you mean. They but, just look odd, like. But isn't that with anything, though? Yeah. The... Like, like, imagine a small rat and then a massive rat. It's not necessarily about it being small, it's the legs to torso ratio. Okay, so what about a rat with a long tail and a, la- a rat with a short tail? The long tail... No, a long tail just seems that's dirty. That's a mad thing. Just seems dirty. And though. it's all curling like that at the back. That's a rat. That's, that's, that's a rat. It's a rata. That's what? A, that's a sewage gutter baby. No, bro, that is master splinter, bro. That's Literally. crazy. Yeah, nah. Mm. Even, yeah. Ugh, that's why I can never move to Australia. Cause and Joe, shout out to the Australian listeners because I've been seeing it going up yeah. and you know what I mean? You know, We, uh, we appreciate you down under. We mm. appreciate you. But... um. I can never go to, like, live in Australia. Yeah, I could visit, but not live. I can visit for sure, yeah. but live. Yeah, live is wild. Massive spiders, mm. bears of chlamydia, kangaroos, mm. and whatever the fuck a sloth is. <laughs> Those are four four reasons mm. that are, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't think it's worth me relocating. Yeah, yeah. I can visit for a month, maybe well, actually, two. Bless we live here, you know. Like, you, have you ever thought, like, we could just have an earthquake one day? Yeah, but we can't because of the plates. Yeah, it? no, but that's what I'm saying. Like, some people, they just wake up and, like... Yeah. They have, like, you know we have fire drills? Mm. They have to have that and earthquake drills. And little evacuations. And, mm, the nuke town nah, thing. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I couldn't... I couldn't live in somewhere like Florida, I don't think. Because mm. that's too... Yeah, prayers up for the hurricane. Is it in Florida? I thought it I was... I think it was in Florida. So oh, yeah. Because I did see a madness, yeah. but then people were making memes online, so I... You know people don't say it if it's seriously. Yeah, but now shout out to them, man, man. Like, hopefully the um their situation changes soon yeah, enough. But, um, the next one is, you can read more words than you can spell correctly. I don't think so. So you think every word you can read, <clears throat> you can spell it the same? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say anything mad. Yeah. But you're looking at someone who's won a spelling bee before. You do that in the UK? Yeah. You didn't do one? In school? Not really. That was a choice, bro. I said, you know what? Yeah, sign man up, bro. Mm. Let me go do that. Yeah. Then I said, spell hyperventilating. Hyperventilating. Dun, 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 dun. Bro, everyone was doing that, bro. Mm. Uh-huh. Everyone was doing that. I know someone's probably going to get us because I didn't spell hyperventilating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, Hi- <laughs> hyper. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hyper, ventilating. Nah. That's like, mom. That's like, rapid. Nah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Can't like put some 808s over there. You yeah, might have your next. TikTok viral tune. Literally. But nah, I, I hear it, man. Um, What we got on the agenda today? Got a couple of topics, a couple of topics. I mean, we could start with either the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. That whole controversy, because I think it's starting to get stupid now. We could start with the whole... Uh, why, do you, why do you think it's getting stupid? Because we might as well just start with that. Okay, let's start it sounded with like you already made your mind up about that. So my thing is, yeah... Bear in mind, Rodri won the Ballon d'Or for this year. A lot of people thought it was going to be Vinicius Junior, me included. Yeah. Other people thought it might be Jude Bellingham. Yeah. Um, and Lautaro Martinez got a couple of shouts as well because you know he does he does his thing in the Serie A every year. Yeah. Um, but Rodri won it, so yeah. Why do you think it's stupid? So for me, what I don't like is how people have all of that literally over a night. Because remember, it was first that. Real Madrid or boycotting the... Mm. So I knew Bellingham would have won it because... I knew... Yeah, when when they said that, I said, oh. So that means it has to be Rodri because Carvajal definitely... God, I will, st- I will completely just watch basketball for the rest no, of my life. But to be fair, no. I'll, the only thing I'll say... <laughs> if he wins it, Jorginho should have won it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, but if but Rodri won it, so Jorginho no, isn't... No, no, no. no, 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 no but Jorginho, Jorginho was at Rodri's level. He had the achievements, but he was at his level. No, but he was impactful as well. The yeah. same way Kante he was... was uh, true, no, just, no, 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 I'm saying, I'm, saying, people, I'm like, not even talking about um, Chelsea, I'm talking about for Italy. No, for Italy, it was good, but you would argue him and Verratti, but that's the yeah, separate yeah, argument. Cool. But what I'm saying is, is that you have to go for my Italians, you know? Yeah, <laughs> Carvajal was is like Jorginho level in terms of he had a great year, had some good trophies, but 
you're just there to look nice. But anyway, um, wow. my whole thing with um, Rodri is that Rodri, for me, when I watch him, I see his impact. Everyone's been gassing him up for a year. They had that whole stat. He's 55 games unbeaten, unbeaten which is in cap. 90 minutes. Which is cap. You know, they forget the 90 minutes. Bit, oh, but yeah. The 55. But we saw last season that Haaland and KDB got injured. Obviously, Foden stepped up. But he was one of the linchpins in that side. Everyone 100%. was gassing him for the whole year. And for me, when he won, it felt like people were angry. And I get it. They don't like defensive midfielders winning it over wingers. Vinny had a great Champions That's League. That's not even my thing, but go on. But for me, <clears throat> when you look at the Ballon d'Or, right? And this is like, this is this is going to go to another rubber we might speak about later. But it really depends on who you think the best league in the world is. Because that really determines what... I hear that. Because think about it, right? When Messi and Ronaldo were dominating... Even though it was just Barcelona and Real Madrid who were, and Atletico were. Yeah, they Sevilla had, had stars. their days. But they were the best league in the world because they had two Goats. alien players. So now that football is a bit more, now that they've left the game, La Liga isn't as dominant. We'll probably say the Premier League is the best league in the world right now. Yeah. And it's probably been that for maybe. For a while. For a long time. Maybe actually. the past five years, you say. Like for the Liverpool time. City era and then now. Like for me personally, if Rodri is a top three player in the league, you say last year. I mean, who else would you? Who else would you really say? Top three. Yeah, last year. That. Yeah. You probably say he's in there. He probably be third. Yeah, he, that's fine. For me, third. that's fine. That's fine. He's top three player. He's integral in the Euros. Top three. They weren't three better players. You'd say you Foden, Foden, and you'd say Palmer. But even then, you'd say they were on his level. And then, but and, and I would say Foden was like no, but Foden won Player of the Year. So no, he won Player of the Year. I'm not, but I'm saying he wasn't like clear of him. No, but that's but this is the thing because when you say when you start comparing like Foden and and um, Rodri, yeah, it's like goals and assists almost. No, but aren't for me, I, I I'm also way. in terms of I care about like important goals. And for me, Foden had league winning goals. But well, he, still... he, Foden didn't have no important goals like that though. Oh, the he only, did. No, if, he, mm. if he didn't score those hat tricks against Brentford and all those no, in but December, when I, when I say, Liverpool when I say, no, no. probably won the when league. I say, or Arsenal, whoever When was. I say um, important goals, I mean in terms of like in the top six clash. And let's not count United because everybody was eating at United. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the Old Trafford buffet was open 24s. Even Bournemouth went there and ate. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So aside of that, Foden like... And that was my only thing about Foden last year winning the Player of the Year. It's like, mm. yes, he had a good season, yeah. but don't let's not let's not act like this guy was clutching up in the big okay, moments. No, no, he, he was. He like, clutched up the last game against West Ham. He wasn't on Gareth Bale's level, but he was maybe a level or two just below that. No, he wasn't because he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He he wasn't on a level where it was like. Hazard at Chelsea when you guys yeah. won the league and it was like everything is going through him. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like Sanchez. Was going through it though. Yeah, but it wasn't everything. It wasn't like, oh, City without Foden, what are they gonna do? No, nah, they would have survived. Um it wasn't like yeah, that it wasn't like Sanchez. That they have so much it wasn't like that's, Sanchez that's at Arsenal. Unfair, it wasn't like Sanchez at Arsenal. It wasn't like Bell at Tottenham. It wasn't even like like Salah at Liverpool, even before they won the league. It was it wasn't even like Mane at Liverpool when when um it was a three way golden yeah, boot but race. I, I don't know. I feel like that makes greatness and like winning the league so binary. Like he won the league. Yeah, no, I, was I'm not I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying. Teams. But you know, I get what you're saying. I I do get what you're on, saying. But back onto the Ballon d'Or point. My overall point was is that he was one of the best players in his league. Yeah. So he ticks one box that is probably universal. He's one of the best players in the Euros team. Ticks another box. And I, and let's be honest here, this Euros win. For Spain, no one actually at the start of the tournament said they were going to win it definitively. Like you could have said they have a chance. I did. But they weren't the favourites. For me, they were the favourites. Nah. But I, I, I said it. It's there on tape. Okay. you can put, it. I mean, you're an you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can win a clip. But what I'm saying is, is that no one, like obviously people are saying England, this better be their year. Yeah. What other team were they saying? They were saying um, England, they were saying France. Spain. Obviously, France are always there. And then they were like Germany because obviously Musiala, Verts. They were home. Havertz. Yeah. yeah, it was, do you know what I mean? So that, that's the thing. So they went out, they dominated. And in fact, he was very much the. Okay, I know Fabian Ruiz was better than him. I know Dani Almo, that goal was crazy. Nico. 
Nico's very good. Nico's, Nico's very, very good. good that tournament. But if we're going to start talking about rankings and the Ballon d'Or thing... No, I'm not going to... I'm straight on him. <laughs> <laughs> straight on you, buddy. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nico... Because he definitely good... did have a better year than Palmer. He had a good year, but like... It, and this, this, this is my problem with the Ballon d'Or year is yeah. that I think year on year, it's now just a popularity thing. That's what it is. And it's no longer... And when I say popularity, I mean popular in terms of who the media favours. Yeah. Because... No, but Over you have years. to remember what it is, though. I know, it's I know, by it's, French media, so... Yeah, but it's... but it's. I don't think it's... No, but I think back in the day, I think the media were a lot more honest and true about... No, no, no. Okay, okay I'll let you land. Know, know. I think over the course of, let's say, the last... Okay, I'm 24, so I'm going to say over the last 15 Ballon d'Ors. So from about 09... It's like four winners. <laughs> hey, <look. laughs> four, five winners. I, I can only talk on what I'm <laughs> awake for, fair really. Enough, enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, when Kaka won the Ballon d'Or, yeah. he was... Unplayable, yeah. Unplayable, crazy. And then Ronaldo and Messi started doing their thing. And then this is where we started to see a couple injustices happen because of popularity. For example, 2013, Frank Ribery was, I would almost say undeniably, the best player in the world. But because Messi and Ronaldo are Messi and Ronaldo... Ronaldo's crazy. No, I do hear it, but Rib <laughs> yo, Ribery no, was Rib insane. Ribery won a treble, I know. And he was insane. No, Ronaldo was crazy. And he was insane. Ronaldo was crazy. I know, I'm, ju I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying. It's like, do you know what it is? But I think he, he shouldn't have finished third. Yeah, okay, I agree with you. Should not have finished third. But that's the thing, right? They were... The reason it wasn't necessarily a robbery back then because they were clear-cut aliens. Like, yeah. they You, you would... You would take Ronaldo, even though Ribéry had a great year, you'd take Ronaldo in that buying team over Ribéry any day of the week. That's the problem. Yeah, is I think, okay, maybe not that one, but then yeah. one we can even say a, a more recent robbery, last year's winner, Lionel yeah. Messi, yeah, over Erling Haaland, who won the treble, broke the Premier League goal-scoring record in his yeah. debut season, and then, like I said, won the treble, Premier League, FA Cup, and the Champions League. But the problem Community is... Community Shield, if you want to throw it in no, there too. You Actually, see, you didn't even win that shit. But still, like... No, but we have... You see, this is the problem. We, there's so many different aspects of the Ballon d'Or that you can't make everyone happy. Mm. If he had won it last year, people would have said football's dead. It's just a robots league. No, no, da, no, no. Da, no da, but da. at least at least if he had won it last year, it would he have made sense. City. It would have so, made sense. He's, he's ticked all the boxes. He's ticked all the criteria. No, but he doesn't tick the aesthetic box. Nope. <sighs> But then again, I think... And that's the problem. But then also... It's People like, want to start to say football's dead. I think, I think the, the, reason, washed. the reason why Messi won it last year is because, oh, it's his last international major tournament. He yeah. might not make it to the next one. Uh, he won you the World Cup. Cup. That's, like, that's and, and the thing is, I think even when people look at look back on Messi's World Cup... Sorry, let me get the rankings up as well. Yeah, no problem. Even when people look back on Messi's World Cup um, journey when he won it, like people acting as if Messi had a crazy tournament. No, he did not. I'll say he was a luxury player, but he was, he was still, a luxury player. And he was still walking. He only woke though. up in the quarterfinals, really. And even then, he wasn't really playing like the Messi that we've seen in other years. Yeah. Because, do you know what I mean? A lot of his goals were, first of all, penalties. And I'm not going to try and knock penalties or whatever. But I'm just trying to say but that. His, his overall play was still good, though. Yeah, but it was, but it's Messi. It was, not yeah. It's Messi. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If we're being real, player of the tournament was probably someone like Kylian Mbappe. Yeah. He who, was in that game, showed Messi up. Yeah. And if he had if he had won the World Cup, mm. Mbappe, he'd have a Ballon d'Or to his name. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, things don't work like that. I think the only reason why I think Vinny should have won it this year is because it's like, if you ask anyone who's the best player in the world right now, I Vinicius Jr. is your answer. And if it's not Vinicius Jr., you'll say Mbappe, but he hasn't warmed up to Real Madrid yet. Okay. That's what people would say. Some people would even say Haaland. Mm. But when I think of Rodri, and again, I'm not even trying to knock it and say Rodri is a terrible player. Oh, he shouldn't have won. It's a complete injustice. I just feel like, you know what? I think Vinny probably did a bit more to win it yeah. in terms of like, when you look at Real Madrid's Champions League campaign, especially, he turned up. And oh, he, he was the guy that was saying, you know what? Like, we're going to win this Champions yeah. League. I know everyone was talking about belly goal for the first like four or five months of the season. But after January, maybe even February, he dropped off quite a bit. But that's my thing. I feel like they have, because remember, they both they both won the double. So they both won it. But for me, if Bellingham wasn't as good, then Vinny would have a league title. And if Vinny wasn't as good, Bellingham would have... I don't, I don't think so. I think... No, he was like, he was injured. So it's not like a... I, I, I do get what so you mean. So he was I he literally couldn't have mm. I, I know if he was there, I, I believe if he was there, they could have won. Yeah, like, and, and we're getting into the realms of if buts and maybe. Maybe's but that's that's the thing and that's my thing. I don't even like the way people kind of 
dismiss Bellingham. Like for me, if you want to argue midfielder for midfielder, last year you could argue Bellingham was crazy. Like like every game you check on Real Madrid mm. in that first six months, he was months, bagging. He was bagging, and it was like and in his first El Clasico, it was just a raw sit like that. And even if he didn't, no maybe he had the best game in that El Clasico. That goal was crazy. That was like I'm here. That was like, yeah. I'm here moment. So for Bro. me. Yeah, like the celebration became iconic, and people want to do the whole PR thing. But he, he said he to went to the biggest club, and became one of their best players while Vinny was out. Like, yeah, there isn't a higher stage. There's nothing even in even in the Euros. Like he was one of England's best players. Yeah, the first couple of games, and then yeah, started teetering off. But yeah. that's neither here nor there. But for me, in terms of the whole Rodri thing, I'm um, I'm not upset. I just don't really like Rodri. And the, only, the only reason, actually, no, no, not that. I, okay, I won't say I don't like Rodri um, because he is a great player. I Personality wise, maybe he might not be the greatest yeah. person. I don't know. But um, I don't like the way that, I don't like the rhetoric around Rodri. That's okay, why well, I don't well, like. Well, 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 I don't like the fact that people act like this guy is the best thing since sliced bread when it comes to CDMs. That boy cold, huh? <laughs> now he's, he, he, he is good. He is very, he's insane. Yeah. The boy won a bad on door. Yeah. I got to give him his props. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think it's like a robbery. Oh no, no football's he, done. I, I think, I think, I we've, think def- we've, definitely seen, we've definitely seen worse robberies. 100%. Okay, what's the worst ones? In my opinion, Pavel Nedved shouldn't have won it over Thierry Henry. And then if, if you want to take it that further, yeah. I don't think Shevchenko should have won it ahead of Thierry Henry. Yeah, that, that's the one that people Cause, should be cause getting. Because those two years... Like, Nedved like, what are you saying for me for? Like, no, 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 no. But Ned, I think the reason why is because that year, Henry was mad. And yeah. then he took it to enough... It's like he, he said, Nedved, yeah, cool. Taking it personally. Mm. Did it even better than the year after yeah. and then still didn't win it. And I think the problem with the Ballon d'Or and the problem with, I think the world when it comes to football and famous players, especially in football, I think the rhetoric around black players, you obviously, we already know this because oh, we're black. Oh, we're doing the racism. No, uh, no, 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 no. L- listen, uh, let me land, let me land. Uh, we already know as black people, we have to do twice as hard, yeah. you know, go the extra mile, the extra 10 miles even, yeah. just to get recognition as someone who is not black. Yeah. And I feel like time and time again, we see it in the world of sports where because a player is black, he might not get the flowers that he mm. deserves. Now, it might not necessarily be Ballon d'Or, yeah. but it's still the same way. Like, for example, look at the way we talk about Raheem Sterling. Yeah? No, no, let me land on this. Let me land on this. Is Raheem Sterling better than Alexis Sanchez? Let me let me cook. No, let no, me just, let me just chill. Just chill. Just chill. <laughs> just chill. Just chill. Just chill. Because we all talk about if, Sterling. If, if, like if, if you talk about Sterling in terms of Premier League, who is better overall, who's had a better Premier League career, it's 100% Sterling. I'm taking Sanchez. Anyway. It's 100% Sterling. Anyway, but continue. But, so but this, these are one of the things that I'm talking about. If you look at someone who has been playing since, playing first team football since 17, okay. has over 100 goals, yeah. has won the Premier League, I think four times or three times. Yeah, four times, I think. Like, this is a player who is undoubtedly one of England's best ever wingers. If yeah. we actually look at it, especially in the Premier League era, one of the best wingers England has ever produced. You can't name me another winger or two that have a better, I guess, career trophy cabinet than Raheem Sterling. But I'm gonna put Raheem Sterling to one I'm side. Start yeah? Saka, let's, yeah. Let's let's put him let's put him to one side. Uh, and then... I'm glad you said Saka. I'm very glad because that was gonna be my next point. If Saka was white, and I'm just being real here, if Saka was white and not black, he wouldn't be treated the way he's treated in certain conversations where it's like, you know, you say, oh, who's better, Saka or Palmer? Who's better, Saka or Foden? And then even if we go a bit further back, oh, who's better, Sancho or Saka? Who's better, Rashford or Saka? I feel like every year, and we see this, yeah. every year Saka goes higher and higher and higher. Before, it was that, oh, he's a left back. He's just whatever. He said, cool, I'm going to take it to the wing. Do my thing. Oh, he just gets assists. He doesn't score goals. All right, cool. He's been scoring goals, scoring goals. Oh, he doesn't carry his team. Big six games. Mm-hmm. He clutches up every single time. And I feel like, I spoke about this when, when I was on the bench podcast here. Yeah? When people talk about Salah, they say, oh, no. Salah's a different level because he's been doing this for years. You can't just come and compare Saka to Salah. Mm. You got to chill, which I fully understand. You have to earn your stripes before you wear them or yeah. before you can even compare your stripes to someone else. Yeah. Same way I'm saying Foden hasn't earned his stripes in terms of being that big player or delivering on a season after season basis. Same way Palmer hasn't earned those stripes yet mm. in terms of being that player season on season that can deliver for their club and carry. Mm. Whereas Saka has. Palmer's had a great year last year. A hundred percent. Let's some of Saka's like, that he has. What do you mean? Like the things he has done. He scored 50 Premier League goals already by the age of 23. Okay. In terms of assists, he's one of the fastest players to get to, I think, 
I can't remember what the, what the number is, but he's one of the fastest players for Arsenal to rack up a number of assists. Yeah. He beat Perez. Yeah. Um, when you talk about someone who's an academy talent, who has, first of all, didn't even start playing his main position until two years after. Yeah. The numbers he put up is crazy. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. And obviously, I've only named Saka and Sterling because, you know, again, I'm very biased towards English football. I predominantly watch English football and I'm in England myself. Okay. But there are other cases. I think even Samuel Eto'o has a chance of, you know, I'm not going to say maybe Ballon d'Or winner, but I feel like he deserved a lot more flowers than he did. I think he's the only player to win back-to-back -back Champions trebles. Leagues and back-to-back -back trebles with two different clubs. Yeah, it's just crazy. It, it, it's crazy. When you think of that and type of feat, it's mad. went the other way. And he was with Prime Messi and that didn't work out. And, and look at the way Slatan is talking about compared to Samuel Eto'o. Yeah. Like, when you, whenever you talk about greats of the game and whatever, a lot of people could say, oh, yeah, Slatan was mad. Zlatan. He was a unicorn, though. He was, I get profile-wise, especially, he that's, was a unicorn. That, that should have made sense. But Samuel Eto'o was a bad boy. No, he was a bad boy. In terms of, bad. like, on paper, what do you want? He did it. So. He did everything, bro. Yeah, like, so. even when he was starting off in Real Madrid, yeah. I feel like that's probably one of the reasons, maybe, because obviously he was at Mallorca, did his thing as yeah. well. Um, but... You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like when you're black, especially in sports, we see it, you know, we all try to do the, you know, no room for racism and things and whatnot. Yeah. But again, Vinny, the way he's seen in the media as well, I think it might be because he's black. Because he likes to express himself. We always see him get abused for, for dancing after you score a goal. Mm. We always see him get abused because he's arrogant. And okay. I can't lie to you, to be the best, you have to be arrogant. Look at look at Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, he would have won those. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Ballon even, if he wasn't arrogant. even Messi, to an extent, you can say he's arrogant because when he's on the pitch, he's like, no, I'm here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone has this idea of Messi as being the humble one and da 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 But no, the guy was arrogant. To be the best mm. and to state you're the best, you have to be arrogant. And that's why I feel like Jude Bellingham fits into that kind of category where yeah. it's like, yeah, he went to Real Madrid and said, I'm here, I'm yeah. the guy. But then when he started doing it for England on the scene and he was like, who else? That's when they started saying, mm, yeah. I don't know, you know, is he getting but a bit they were liking it at first until the stinker started coming though. But, but that's the thing. And when, when you look at other players that stink, mm. stink, the most smelliest stinks I've ever seen on an international scale mm. in Phil Foden for his country. Yeah, that was bad. That was it's bad. Bad. That was bad. And no one talks about it. That was bad. So that's why I say there's a difference between the way black players are treated and white players are treated. And I think we've seen that with the Ballon d'Or as well. Okay, so but, I'm going to address some of the points you made. First yeah. of all, the Salah benchmark thing, when you said um, people said Salah's consistent, da 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 I don't know if you remember this year. When he first came into the league and broke the goal scoring record, the way these guys were dicky and saying, yeah. this guy's going to be a one season wonder. Yeah, He's not yeah. going to be that yeah. good. Who yeah. likes watching him? Mm -hmm. He can't dribble. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And I think that's at the same time, that was the time when um, Eden Hazard was still in the league at the time. Yep. So, and I think Sanchez was just about towards the end of his Arsenal time. No, no, Sanchez was cooked. Are you sure? Oh, no. he, like he was halfway cooked. Yeah, he was at the oh, end yeah, of yeah, Arsenal, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was yeah, at the yeah, end of Arsenal. Saying, yeah. So like, it wasn't like they weren't comparing them at the time, but no one really rated Salah until really two, three years. Like even in. the trio, people don't even like saying that trio is one of the greatest trios we've ever seen. But it should be held in that status. I think that. the only, I think the only reason why is because when you see Bobby Firmino, yes, he was integral, but yeah. he wasn't putting up the numbers of like you know oh, Benzema, Bell, Cristiano, that, 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 MSN. That, that used to be nightmare fuel, bro. Huh? Seeing those three on the counter, oh, yeah. nightmare fuel. Bro, bro. I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. You don't think I know that? <laughs> like, I'll never forget. What was that opening game? That five 0 or something against you guys? Whoa, whoa, five one or whatever it was. Whoa, in the, in the New Balance kit. Whoa. I'll never forget that opener. Whoa, yeah, yeah, whoa. yeah, yeah. He knows the game. Only four or something. Five two. <laughs> but still, like you know, like no. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, they and then they had Coutinho in the cut. As well, yeah, they, they were mad. They were a mad team. But yeah. what my point on Salah was is that he wasn't. It took him, I would say, probably till that league win, till that it was like, just we have to give it to him at this point. Like, yeah, but I think what it was his first year that they went toe to toe. Yeah, and then in the second year they won it, wasn't it? Well, his first year at Liverpool. No, no. It's... Oh no, sorry, sorry, no, no, no. It was his second year at Liverpool that he was like, yeah. The no, first I'm... year, I think they finished fourth. Or something. I'm like, he's like, second year he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big dog, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third year, he won it. No, but do you remember at first? He and was also, having... they went to the champs as well. Yeah, but do you remember at first he was having that like, um, how would I describe it? He wasn't scoring as many goals against the big six. Yeah, he was stat padding a little bit. Yeah, at first. And, and then, then, and then he grew into and it. I don't know if it was against United or someone or the first team. United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Barbecue chicken, bro. Well, 
finger looking good. But yeah, like after he did that and then he started building his resume. So for me, it's like, for me, Saka, if you retired today, we're going to be like, no, this guy was like a great, whatever, whatever. Yeah, but so I know it's hard to appreciate them when they're here, but we will appreciate people like Raheem Sterling, Saka. I've, I've got a rebuttal to that. And the rebuttal is that I can understand because when Saka started scoring goals and becoming a key player for Arsenal, yeah. yes, you can say that he wasn't potentially putting up the performances against, you know, your Man Cities, your your United, your yeah. Chelsea. Well, Chelsea he always performs against Chelsea, yeah, he's really. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, that's the beauty of it. And that's the parallel within Salah as well. Mm. Because like we just both agreed, when Salah first came into the league, he wasn't just whooshing past Arsenal, Chelsea, City, yeah. Liverpool. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't just whooshing goals past them. Yeah. He grew into that. Yeah, and yeah. Saka grew into that as well. But now when you look at the amount of goals yeah. and assists he has against the top six, it's... It's groundbreaking, bro. I think he's got like 25 or 21. Yeah, he's done like, both of himself. It's crazy. But Every time he plays City, say he's in Saka integral. has improved, though. That, that, that's the thing we forget. You wouldn't say? No, no, I'm saying he oh, has yeah. improved. So, for example, at first it was like, this is a great academy product. This is mm. why you should bleed academy players in. To, no, this is a Premier League quality winger. To, this guy might be world class. To, now where he's at now. So, for me, as well, it's hard to... The reason he gets so much stick at times, for me personally, is that we sometimes we get ahead of ourselves when we rank him. And that's sometimes been my problem, not necessarily with him, but the way people speak about it. It's not that necessarily he's bad or whatever, whatever, but sometimes we get a bit too eager. But but you know it is like I know again, we have to give them their flowers, but sometimes Okay, but then when you look at someone like okay, and this steps away from my race issue yeah. now, we're, now we're just talking about class. Yeah. Now when you look at someone like Lamine Yamal, people say, oh yeah, no, Lamine Yamal's clear, Saka. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's better than Saka. No, that like, kid's crazy. He's not better than, but you can't, you can't <laughs> say, you can't say someone who's played <laughs> one year of, of good <laughs> football. Crazy. You can't say that someone who's played one year of, that boy, that boy different, man. Nah. That boy different. Look, 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 I'm not going to lie to <laughs> that you. That boy different, man. I, I'm not even, I love Palmer. <laughs> yeah, what I feel is peace. Look, look, look. <laughs> that boy different, bro. Of course not. Palmer, that has, boy Palmer hasn't got a CV to go up against Yamal's CV. Like, it's, cool that's cool though. What? Cool Trouble with her. What's going on? Low it. Anyway. Low it. Anyway, but um, I'm patient medal. I'm <laughs> saying, yeah, when you compare Lamin Yamal and Saka, you can say Lamin has a higher ceiling, mm. which to be fair, he might, he probably does. Because yeah. when Saka was his age, he, was he wasn't like putting this. up performances like that. He was playing well, yeah. but he was also playing left back. Lamin Yamal at his age was starting in yeah. his team, in his favourite position yeah. and for his country as well. So it's different. You can say Lamin Yamal has a higher ceiling. Yes, you can even say that, you know what, he might have more natural talent because, you know, he's dribbling or yeah. he's passing, whatever. You can say that. But then when you start to say who's better, don't disrespect the years. And that's why I say... You wouldn't say something like Lamin Yamal is better than... Is, Fo is better than Foden. You wouldn't say Lamine Yamal is better than Salah. You wouldn't say Lamine Yamal is better than... Is that, he's not better I don't than know, Salah, but like, I'll take him over Foden. No, yes, you would take him because that's who you prefer. But if I'm saying who is better... Yeah, you, if you ask me who's better right now, I'll say it's Lamal. Of course, because Foden's thinking. But okay, cool. Yamal and Saka. In t if you compare them now, I'm still taking Saka. If I, mean, I say who's better, I'm taking Saka. If I'm the owner of the team, I'd rather watch Lamal. But I wouldn't be mad if... I took Saka instead. Like, but it's, it's no, close for me. All, all close I'm saying is it's lazy. Sa no, but for me, Saka, I get what you're saying in terms of Saka has put a lot of work in the game and he's got the numbers to back it as well. He's done well for himself. But the does, thing is, There's right, not much else that you can ask for. Yeah, there's not much else. He's performed for his country, he's performed for his club, he's done it all. But when you watch Lamar, like, just, it's different, man. It's di you don't see talents like, well, Saka, it's the... It's a Messi and Ronaldo argument, but on a lesser level, really. Yeah, I, I, it's I, I, I get what you mean. hard work versus he's just got it. Uh, you know, it's, it's and like, it doesn't, it might, it doesn't it look be, like Lamar works hard for it, whereas Saka, it every year, be he the, gets better. It might not even be the hard work because I feel like I, I kind of get annoyed when people say, oh, no, Messi just like that. He didn't have to work hard. Yeah, yeah, obviously, we, we know but it's that. Like, it's like Messi was like, here, now. Yeah. Ronaldo was like, yeah, he's a talent. Oh, wait, he's cold. Oh, wait, he's world class. They gave my man the Ballon d'Or. I hear it, he's the best yeah, type yeah. thing. And Saka's doing the same thing where it's like, yeah, great talent. Yeah. Oh, great player. Oh, he's world class. Yo, he's the man of the team. Yeah. And your mouse now, he's got the talent. He's here now type thing. No, but okay, let's look at... That's what let's I'm saying. Let's look at, okay, so when's the, when would the next Ballon d'Or uh, period be? It's, Jan it's calendar year, so... So... It'll basically be, be anything from like December onwards. 
let's say Barcelona win the league, mm-hmm. which they had to beat the Galacticos 2.0, whatever, whatever. Basically. No yeah. matter how bad they are. They're stacked. No one picked anyone else to win the league. They said the next five, whatever. Yeah. Let's say, for example, they go deep in... Let's say they win the Champions League, just for argument's sake. Let's cool. say they win the Champions... Let's say they win a treble, just for argument's sake. For me, Lamar will probably have to be an integral part for all of that to happen. For me personally. I don't... I don't. But see, now, that, that in itself... And then for me, I, I wouldn't be mad if he had the numbers to back it and he won a Ballon d'Or for that. I hear that, but at the same and time... And it wouldn't be... You he's, not, he's not the main man for Barcelona. And the reason why... The He's the favorite. Rafinha's doing more than Yamal right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, Rafinha's doing a lot more. He's not. Lewandowski is still. No, no, no. Lewandowski is still putting up numbers. Oh, man, like, man. let's. So when you watch Samar, do you enjoy it? <laughs> I do. I'm not even trying to knock him and say he's bad. But <laughs> it doesn't sound like. No, but he's not. He's not the main man now. Yamal is like the starlet that no, yes, he's, everyone he's a, wants he's to see. He's an X factor. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. He's, he's he's a star in he's a, he's a rising star in the team, yeah. and he's a young talent that everybody okay. wants to see. You know when? But if he's not playing, Barcelona will still win the same way with or without him. Now this yeah. season is this no, no no this season is now where we're seeing that okay no you know he burst into the team last year and everyone was like wow Yamal okay like he's earning his 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 place in the team yeah. cool he's earned that now but he hasn't I think. If you if you're the Barcelona coach right now, yeah. I'm not sure if he's going to be number one on the starting list. He will be top three, top four for sure. Yeah, but he's not going to be number but one. Me, if you look at Arsenal yeah, yeah. and Saka, he's going to be number one. But then you see, this is the problem, and that's because he's earned it it's year not, on not, year. It's not fair because at the same time, right? Lamar is 17, Saka is what 22, 23 now, and that's what I'm saying. No, he, no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, is that at six, okay, Lamar's game. The fact that we're even putting him in a conversation with Saka is crazy. That's how good he is. Yes, but then also... And his game isn't like... Do you know There what? isn't that many things that's childish about his game, really. Cool, let me say There's this things he thing. could improve, but... Yeah. When he improves those things, it's like, who, who's better than him? Let me let me talk on this one one player here. So imagine, imagine a player hmm. of like similar Yamal qualities yeah. and talent yeah. and especially bursting onto the scene in Barcelona and thinking that yo well, this guy this, this guy is going to be the next <laughs> no but it could happen it could happen it, yeah, it, it could happen Ansu, but they didn't Ansu win Fant- the Euros though and he oh, wasn't the big man for that that's, that's, be, that's different because of the, the time that Spain were in it's not you can't blame man no, because of the Euros okay, bro if we go back to the original discussion which was the Ballon d'Or yeah Narratives make Ballon d'Ors. A lot of those Ballon d'Ors, Ronaldo won <clears> because of narratives. And a lot he of the ones the that Messi won, man. a lot of the ones that Messi won, actually, I'd say about two of the ones that Messi won were narrative. He should not have won and last that's, year. That's all I'm saying. I, even I'm, even Modric, narrative as well. Do you know what it is? We, I, I think... The fact that they can't, sorry, the fact that they cancelled it for 2020 for, for when Lewandowski yeah, yeah, was doing yeah. dirt, it's narrative as well. Like, all I'm saying for is me, that the Ballon d'Or not... nowadays is flawed. Like, I, I think it's I don't think actually... it's nowadays. I think it's the it's... fact that... When I say nowadays, I'm talking about the last, like, six I years. Think it's flawed. At a point in time, it was the narrative and the player, the best player in the world and the narrative. Were hand in hand. But, but now, now... It's it's doing this. It's doing this now it's doing this. But now it could be, like... It's doing that. One could, the scales are a bit tipped. So, for example, Bernardino was, narrative-wise, made everyone happy watching him. And he was also winning amazing trophies, won Champions Leagues, leagues with Barca. Mm. Whereas now it's like, Haaland doesn't really get me off my feet like Musiala does, but he's got the stats, he's got the trophies. No, so he's getting to a point not, where... Nah, like, that's, that's, that's not the same thing because when, when people talk about the best striker in the world, they still talk about Haaland. Whether or not he's aesthetically pleasing, strikers, your game is to score goals, mm. bro. It's not like Haaland's a winger and he's better clunky and then he's just rasping it from 25 yeah, every yeah. single time. We're not talking about him like he's like, like that. What I'm saying is... No, but you know, people would make the argument that he's a very limited player if it's not perfect around him. Which, which is very true, but then again... We've seen Especially a lot. Of, Norway, we've seen a lot of limited players. We've seen a lot of limited players still win the Ballon d'Or. We've seen a lot of that limited is, yeah. Michael Owen. Even that one was a bit like like he, like he was a striker. Yeah, on the ball, yeah, he was fast and nimble and stuff. But you're not expecting a man to drop deep and start doing passes. That's yeah. not his game, and that wasn't the game at the time. When you look at someone like I don't know, when you look at someone like Kaka. Who won the Ballon d'Or? Yeah, he is a 
well-rounded footballer. He can do it all. Yeah, yeah. And what we're used to seeing is Ballon d'Or winners who can do it all. Do you know what I'm trying to that's say? That's what I'm saying. The aside figure, aside yeah. of when it comes to pure strikers. Because at the end of the day, your job as a striker is to bag. Yeah, it's yeah. only nowadays now, I'd say within the last like three, four years, that we're starting to say, okay, yeah, the striker, yeah, he can score goals, but like, what's his overall game? Like, can man dribble? Can man drop? Can man yeah. fly out to the wing if, if needed be? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's never been the criteria when it comes to Ballon d'Or. Who rasses the most goals, that's what gets you there, bro. Yeah. But when it, when, it, when it comes to other parts of the um, game, when it comes to midfielders, when it comes to wingers, attacking mids, even defenders, it's a bit more now. It's a bit more like, okay, yeah, you can do your job. Yeah. How influential are you? Can you also add to the goals and assists? Obviously, aside of Cannavaro, because Cannavaro was just on the match. Again, that was year, another narrative as well. Exactly. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it's it's different. When we're talking about midfielders, a lot more comes into the game. And when we're talking about midfielders, I'm just like, hey, yo, Rodri, I, I hear him being the best CDM in the world. I hear that. There's not anyone that can really rival really with a, that. That's the thing as well. He wasn't really a CDM last year. He so was an eight. No, I'm saying he was an eight though. Mm. Like, he was, like that's what remember? Don't you remember like around Christmas time mm. when everyone was like him and Declan Rice? They're coming up with goals and assists. Mm. You don't think he was an eight last year? Mm. Come on, man. That guy was going. That guy had like eight goals and like six assists or something stupid. Doesn't like make him an eight. No, he was playing like an eight. He was getting that's... forward and he was defending very well. But he wasn't an eight. Box to box, whatever you want to call it, whatever fancy way you mm. want to call it. That right there, that boy. Best, right there. best goal scorer in the CDM, whatever you that want to call it. That boy right there is a holding midfielder. He's not an eight. He's he's if one he of put, the best holding. If you put Rodri in eight, he might he might struggle a little bit. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's just, no, it's the same. It's the same way that Declan Rice, when you put him in the eight, struggles a little bit because when you're in eight, it requires a whole lot more mobility. And things are moving at a faster pace. When Rodri's best position is right in front of those centre halves, dictating play, mm. letting people come onto him and trying to intercept or you know what I mean, being that kind of that anchor yeah. for your midfield. Because we all know with the way that City play, it's De Bruyne ahead of him, okay. and then it's Bernardo Silva or you know now they have Gundogan there yeah. or whoever. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But the deepest midfield is always Rodri. He but the fact that he had like 15 goal contributions, yeah, from the, CDM, from, the ed- from the edge of the box, not, or like not... little corner things and whatever, which I hear, and I'm not even trying to knock it. So cool. <laughs> Being so like a lot, like, some of his goals last year were like scrappy, bro. It was just from like corners, and it's, he's rasped it cool from like six yards out. That's I hear not, it. Let's not do goal watch now. We're talking about his goals. I'm no, not, bro. No, you, no you, but like, he he definitely scored five goals where it was either it, it was won them the game. It, yeah, it was important. I'm not. It was outside the box, and it was just what was that one where it cut? I don't know. I can't remember the two against Chelsea. No, I don't think it was against. I don't think there was one where he rushed it against Chelsea from outside the box. Arrow. No, it was like it just curled top corner. I don't yeah, think yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. He would do, he would. Do, that's what I said. It's either edge of the box or like just outside no, the box. Saying, and he's, and that is like it. amazing. Or from corners and like yeah, little yeah. whatever, and then he just. He, he taps it in yeah. and I'm not even saying to say tapping with, to have negative connotations to kind of downcast his thing I'm just saying that's how he scored his goals but he was not playing like an 8 it's only because when City play they they, they pushed you into your box Yeah. so it allows your holding midfielder to be at the edge of the D because bro he's the deepest midfielder the whatever, point is out there on the right was. Foden's out there yeah. on the left or Bernardo Silva the wingers are literally right there Maybe even coming into the inside pockets of that box. And then Harlan's there as well. Whatever he was, whether he was an eight, six, seven, whatever you want to call him. The guy was the best in his position. People were saying that he was clear, damn near. The guy was complete, whatever, whatever. And he won the, the battle. Only, the only thing I don't like, yeah? The it's only all. thing I don't like is that now in 10, 15 years time, they're going to look at him and Busquets and be like, well, Busquets ain't got no Ballon d'Or, so... No, but that, that one's... Busquets is very much an eye test player, though. Because there's nothing... There's like Obviously, he has an amazing trophy cabinet, but, like, his stats aren't crazy in terms of... Because they never and, needed to be. No, but you can only appreciate Busquets by watching him. So, if anyone brings you that argument, you can inst- yeah. You know there's certain players you can instantly tell someone that watched Yeah, but, but even even Rodri, like, you, he didn't score, like, 10 goals or 12 goals. And no, but if like... you compare him to any other CDM, his goals and assists <gasps> yeah. look better than... A, a lot higher, so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So that's, like, one of his, like, key factors in terms of yeah. if you're just looking at it numbers but, but that's what I'm saying. I don't want history to, to, to forget that it's not all about stats. Like but, I mean, if they want it to be about stats, yeah, sure, you can think Rodri's better, but... <sighs> Oh. If you actually watch the game, you know Busquets is better. Hundred yeah, percent. And so. and anyone with a brain should know that Busquets is better. 
Yeah, Same way that anyone with a brain should know that Thomas Party is a baller, but you know, whatever. No, he's, like, good. he's good, man. He has his days. He has his days. His days been coming quite quite frequently. I <laughs> tell you that. Okay, excited. I tell you that. Uh, <laughs> negativity is that the washing <laughs> Trying to bring negativity in the studio. It's yeah, cool. man. But um, yeah. Joke, man. What else? What else is there to discuss this week? We can week? talk about the t- San Hart getting sacked finally. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Like, I'm surprised they. I'm surprised they waited this long. But to be fair with you, I want to say cut. To be fair with you. I if I was um Amarim, I'm yeah. sorry, Amarim, if I was like Ineos, I would have waited until the November international break. Because so. then club managers aren't really doing anything. It gives them it give whoever's gonna come in, whether it be Amarim, which it very much so it looks like it's gonna be Amarim, yeah. um, gives them time with the players that are there already, you know, that haven't yeah. either coming back from injury or players that are not international with their team. Be there to say, okay, guys, look, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to tackle the games coming up until the new year. Whereas right now, it's like, obviously, by the time this comes out, the game would already happen. But it's Chelsea United. That's a big game. Yeah, so that's a big game. That's that's almost like a baptism of fire. But the only re- how many games till the next international break? Like four. Yeah, you could just get let it wait. As in, oh, as in to the one coming up. Yeah. Oh, uh, th- two. Get two or three get Rude to handle that just watch who you like and trade in and then fully take over in November you can still do that and True. let's be honest you can't leave Ten Hag for another two three games man the way that was going why not mm-hmm, you see <laughs> <laughs> they're what they're 14th now 14 bro it's crazy like if they wanted if they had any hopes of getting Europe they had to have Get on rid of him they have to, to they start. have to damn near almost go unbeaten for the rest of the season yeah which is yeah, difficult. And there's still teams like Brighton around. That's Brentford will come and show them a little something. something yeah. Villa, yeah. Oof, Newcastle trip to St. James. It'll be yeah, tough. And, good do you know what I mean? So. But I think Amarin will be good. And again, I said it when I was on, on that football podcast. Mm. I said it. I said Amarin would be great. Him or Tuchel. But obviously Tuchel's gone to England. Yeah. Um, But Amarin, I'm a big fan of him. Okay, let me, let's switch to the Tuchel thing. Do you think, right? Because... I can just see how this is gonna go. First of all, let me just yeah. pause you there. Um, yeah, you guys weren't really expecting a full episode, were you? But yeah. it's part of the Black Mirror series, yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, I, we do obviously talk about more stuff towards the end of the episode that aren't football related. Um, but you know, if you if you want, click on another episode. Mm. Um, to get you know your feel of things, treat this pod like Black Mirror. Mm. Every other episode. You're going to enjoy it. There might not be something for you every single episode, yeah. but there will be something for you most episodes. Most so episodes, yeah. if football isn't your thing, I apologize, I apologize that we, you know, ranted on for so long. Yeah. But yeah, go click on another episode or just fast forward like 10 minutes or so. And There's timestamps. Yeah, yeah there's timestamps there. So At least watch that bit. And then yeah, and then go about your day. Go about your day. Yeah. yeah, leave a like though. You're going about your day. But yeah, sorry, go on. But yeah, in terms of the two cool thing, I just see that. Him fit, like getting knocked out of the quarterfinals to a good team, and they're just they're just gonna start hating. Them. Yeah, why well, can't why well, can't you know bring one of our one of our own? No, well, it won't even be that. It'll be like Gareth, man, we took him for granted. Yeah, and then it'll be like, it see, won't, it, they won't implicit, they won't explicitly say that. No, no, but they'll be like, see now, this is the benefit of having someone who knows the you England see, system. Yeah. You know, someone who what about Lee Carsley? Yeah, because yeah. he, he was you know got some of the young lads from the twenty ones. Yeah, no, I didn't no, want no, him to. No, I didn't no. want him to have a chance there. He he seemed okay. Yeah, like he seemed a bit more progressive in terms of yeah. letting the ball play. I, I playing think Gomez. It just speaks to a bigger problem. Yeah, that we just don't have good enough coaches. But the fact yeah, that I, Sean Dyche is a top ten coach, potentially even top five. Nah, he's top five in terms of English coaches. Yeah, they aren't five better. Ah, <laughs> um, like you're gonna have to hell. start. You're gonna have to start naming unemployed guys like Eddie Howe, Potter. Sal, Sal, I don't even know about that. Um, uh, yeah. uh, Aladas, still, I don't know. Oh, nah, nah, he's. Oh, oh um, Hodgson? Terry. Oh, no. Nah, is nah, Rednap nah. still? Oh, he retired. Nah, he retired. No. What about his son? Does he? Oh, no, nah, he's uh, pundit. Um, Neville? No. Nah, nah, he's yeah, even he yeah, he yeah. Ah, exactly. It's it's <laughs> yes, tough. It's, yeah. And then when you even think about it, it's just like like all of these guys. I feel like I don't know. I think there needs to be a bit more support. Yeah. Lower down the football pyramid yeah. and I mean like grassroots I there needs to be support though, there we the in England they charge 10 times more to get your coaching badges than other countries yeah that's why Graham went that's why Graham fled to Norway yeah and then oh, sorry, say fled but we went to Scan- he went to Scandinavia 
I said, get out. <laughs> nah, um, yeah, he went to Scandinavia, did his badges there. Yeah. Cause yeah, cooked he... with Ostersons. Brighton took a chance on him, and now we talk about Graham Potter. Like, oh wow! And then he got the Chelsea job. Didn't quite go to plan. Yeah, but he's still a good to, manager. To be, did we? No, we did have him during the whole uh, blue ISIS COVID. thing. Oh, sorry. Whoa, Whoa. blue coving. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. So that's why I'm like that. He was bound to show. Yeah, I don't. That, that's what I'm saying. That's what I said. It didn't work no, out. I don't even think Todd Bowley and those guys knew what they were doing no. at the time. I so. think they're just like, let's get someone. Like, we're on these English guys. Potter's good. He's doing well, Brian. Put him in there. Yeah, and then I feel like they're better now, but. Done. Back then, they didn't really know what they were doing. But yeah, nah. England, yeah, they better, they need to. They, it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a problem, and it's a problem that I speak on all the time. Mm. I say that England, we just want to play the same. We just want to play 4 4 2. Yeah. Yeah. Two bags of 4 2 up front, knock it long to the big man up top, let him do his thing. I don't feel like we commit to it, though, because that's could, the problem. We could we don't, do that, though. We could, but we don't commit to it because yeah. we like to see. And I think I think it's also there's a bit of 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 blame on Pep Guardiola because yeah. he is so good that he's inspired everyone yeah. to now do the whole playing out from the back, the game, inverted fullbacks, inverted wingers. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not gonna say that it's predominantly his fault. Yeah. All I'm gonna say is that we don't have a a, a cultural way of playing football that is it's a it's a it's a flagpole in the whole pyramid. You can see it in every single step of the pyramid and it works. Mm. And we don't have coaches that are allowed to develop their own game properly. I feel like a lot of the coaches, like a lot of English coaches, yeah, yeah, get stuck somewhere between like League One and Conference. Obviously there are English managers in the championship as well, but usually you see a lot of foreign managers in the championship that, you know, were probably in the Premier League and they got relegated with that same club and they're still there. Yeah. Or they were in the Premier League and they were like, you know, because they got Premier League expertise, let's get, let's get them down here. Let's, you know what I mean? Build with the lads and da, 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 da. But I think a lot more chances should be given to England English managers and a lot more support should be given to English managers. But then also, not just English white managers. Yeah? Oh, so because yeah, black coaches, there should be yeah. black managers, there should be Asian managers. Yeah. Like, of all kinds. There's so many people that... When you look at the English team, yeah? Mm. How many of these guys, when you, when you talk about your star players, are white? Yeah, ain't many. You don't think any of these like guys... Palmer, you bro, like, you think any of these... <laughs> 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 but you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, okay, I'm sure some of these guys are great coaches as well. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've come across one black coach in my whole, like, mm. career, I'd say, that I can be like, yo... He knows his stuff, man. He knows his stuff. You could even stuff. argue, like, if, let's say, for example, you don't think Gareth Southgate is the best tactically, but he knows how to motivate people. Imagine, like, a squad full of black players and then there's a black person doing what Gareth Southgate did. Do you know how crazy that would be? Crazy. In a good way. Yeah. Not in a bad way. Crazy like, for the EDL guys, but, like, anyway, anyway, anyway get about them. Because at the end of the day, if they if he wins, like, a World Cup or a Euros, they get his name tatted put his face on the yeah, so you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like him at first but you know he, he brought it home so uh, he, he's, he's alright yeah I exactly to, so. I'll keep an eye on him but he, that's, that's what I'll be saying bro As long, so that's the thing that'll be interesting with Tuchel if you win you know De I can tell you one you're thing. fine with me <laughs> <laughs> them England fans I don't think they'll be singing those, those seven German bomber songs anymore yeah they shouldn't because Tuchel might be like hey yo what the yeah, fuck <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even laugh, but that's crazy. Yeah, Imagine yeah. that. But then again... They no, nah, they, they know better. They know better. You say that, but then there have been times where, you know, back when racism was rife in English football, that they'd be booing their own black players. Yeah, that's true. Chelsea in particular. That's the one that comes to mind. I'm go. just saying. There we go, there we go. Just saying, mate. Well, let's switch topics, man. Let's let's switch dude, this guy had to ruin the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get on political. Oh, shucks. <laughs> nah. I just wanted to ask you, yeah, have you ever been um, love bombed by a woman? Yeah. Because I feel like it's spoken about a lot on our side that we definitely, as guys, there's definitely been times where we've done it, but have it, has it ever been the other way around where you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like it. Um, yeah, I, felt, I felt intimidated and yeah. scared, like yeah. honestly, because it was a bit too much. Yeah. And it was has, too was it Was it genuine or did it, was it like, did it end up being like a set up? Because I feel like set-up chicks are the ones oh, that you think... Oh, 100%. I, remember that story I told you, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was definitely like, what? 
can't I just, be this easy. It, it can't be I this easy. I back myself, but <laughs> it's can't be that easy. That's what I'm saying. But no, I've actually been loved, but I'm like properly like, yo, like just a lot. And it's mm. like, mm, step back, <laughs> young yeah. man. Uh, step back. <laughs> we're not, we're not doing, be a lady. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like leave some room for courting. Yeah, literally. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm all for women being up front and, you know, saying, you know, sticking it on me. Yeah. Once you stick it on me, don't stick me up. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Like, let me, let me love... rebuttal and let yeah. me go back and, do you know what I mean? But the definition of love bombing is more so like, it's more so post, post, I don't know, post what, getting what you want, if you get what I mean. Oh, so yeah. like, it's more so showing a lot of love at first, but then like, you just go back to your normal after oh, okay. a while. No, nah, I think, I think I've just Because you know some people are like romantics from start to finish. It's not really yeah. that. It's more so... Romantic, 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 and then he finally hit, and, and then phew. they just get completely complacent. Yeah, but I can't lie. I think that whoa, I was gonna sound very harsh. Mm. I was gonna say that's the circle of life, but it's not. I was gonna say I think that's the circle of how certain people. You know how, like for example, you know how they say like if you meet a girl in a club, she might not be your wife. Yeah. If you meet her on the street, she could. You she, know what I mean? Yeah. There's different. Scenario. It's kind of the same way mm. where it's like you gotta analyze like. Yo, like, especially from a woman's perspective, like, but, you know, like, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. But, like, if you meet a brother and he's auntie, auntie, and you got your cheeks hanging out, there's bare cleavage. Yeah, you can kind of figure out what he's Come on, man. After. You're showing off of your bumper, of course he's going to only hit. Like, come on, bro. So, it's... Well, that's how he perceives you, to Yeah, man. You could have, like, two doctorates and... Yeah, anybody, he, anybody, anybody give a da- anybody give a he, damn he, about them degrees yeah, okay you wouldn't care the degrees he's talking about is something else yeah, so. I'm telling you <laughs> trying to make you do that 90 degrees <laughs> that's all that's what I'm saying but um, yeah like I think you just need to yeah with that love bombing thing mm. yeah it's not it's not nice nah man like I've, I've been put off I'm like mm. I'm not like a deer in it but like on that first approach, mm. you can let man know you're interested and let man know that, okay, yeah. What, yeah, I feel like... Yeah, okay, Especially, yeah. I me... know people say men are quote-unquote easy, but a lot of the times, if you just show interest... And do you know, some of the interest is very basic. Yeah, it's it just basic, like... Basic. You know, it, all it takes is, like, like it's that declaration of interest, Yeah. then you let me do the rest for a little bit. And then you just drop in little, yeah, just you know, tiki taka man. Ju- not, bro, play not with from, me. Yeah, like, no, bro. <laughs> play, play me with me. Not just a goal kick trying to get to, to me a goal, to you. Like, to me to you. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, do it like the chuckle brothers, bro. Literally. That's literally all it is. Yeah. And it's you know once you do that one two, you give, you receive, and you give it back. Yeah. Bro, it's sweet. We all know. Look at that prime Barcelona, mm. Arsene Wenger. This is beautiful football. But then when it's like. I'm always trying to fizz the ball into you and you don't even want the ball. Yeah. It's looking awkward. Mm. Am I the bad player? Or is it you that your touch is crazy? It's true. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's, you got I said uh... it last week, man. What's your touch, man? <laughs> What's your touch? What's... Wait, when did we say... What did we say that about? Remember the, uh, when that guy moved to a girl in the club and then he asked for a date on that same day? Just watch your touch, watch man. Watch your touch. Your Composure, touch. bro. So I'm not enough... Comp- and do you know what is it? One thing mm. I realised as well, yeah? Obviously, we see it from the other side where it's like when when girls like for example, I'm pretty sure there's times where your female friends come to you yeah. and it's like, yo, man, them are mad and yeah. you know, they're crazy, and we're thinking like, surely they can't be that crazy because yeah. like I'm cool, my boys are cool. Yeah, the general consensus is pretty cool. Yeah, but yo, when you, some of your friends come to you about the stories that they've had, yeah, but do you know what it is as well in life, yeah, hmm. you never know, like the moment someone might meet someone, yeah. There's just so many different aspects in life when people... Because, like, for example, when... Remember when... Actually, no. Nah, no, nah, say it. It's too late. Say it, bruv. <laughs> remember when we went out, yeah, uh, to Tobias thing? Mm. And then there was that guy who looked like he came out of prison. It looked like he came out of prison? And he was, like, around our group. And... Oh, the unk? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He looked like he came out of prison. He just looked... No, he he looked. He Actually, had, he, he, he saw his phone. Oh, I didn't see his phone. I didn't. It's like a tra- not even a trap for just a Nokia. But it wasn't like he was on, like he was a like he was on violence. Like it was more so like, did you just spawn? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. People come out in different stages of their life. They might come out from a relationship. They're just trying to. No, nah, like, but him, they I might think, be hungry. I you think he know. said he was definitely hungry, yeah. but in a different way. Um, but he said something like. He, he just went out on his Jack Jones because I think he's like new. Yeah. Like new to London or whatever. But mm. wherever he came from, mm. 
if that's the decorum yeah. and the etiquette that he's used to, uh, do you know we is? might need to question that land. Only because he was moving mad. But okay, you're, you're, only because he's moving mad. Everyone knows guy, that. You're a guy in like the Netherlands or America. How do you make friends? Because we need to have this conversation. No, it's true. Because like, as guys, yeah, obviously you have your batch that you first meet mm. and then maybe whatever you do in life, you make friends along the way in terms of work, yeah. football, church, whatever. And those are just the people you're around. And really and truly, the people you meet after, like you're cool with them sometimes, but yeah, you rarely I, I make get, as I many dogs. Mean. But like, if you, for example, you were lonely and you just wanted to make friends as a guy, mm. how would you do it that coming across as a big? Do you know how I'd do it? Yeah. I'm g- I can't lie to you. I'm thinking about my interests yeah. and I'm going, I'll probably go to a sports bar or a football game or some sort of sports yeah. game because man them love sports. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, cool. For, say for example, I landed in America. Yeah. I landed in, I don't know, um, Wisconsin. Yeah. I just picked a random place where I don't know anyone. Yeah. yeah. Um, like in terms of like no family ties, no nothing. I ain't never been there before. I'm thinking, all right, cool. So like, I like football. Soccer probably isn't as big here. Yeah. I might seek out some soccer sports bars as well. But then I also like basketball. Mm. Let me go see what's going on over there. Yeah. I like the gym. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the gym. Oh, I'm making friends at the gym. No, 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 no. But I'm saying that's a long term. I'm saying okay, if you go to the club, how I'm would... not going to the club to make friends. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and even if like cool, even if I go to the gym, yeah. I'm, so if even if I go to the club. And I get along with another brother. I'm not gonna rely on that brother to be my to be my brethren or my boy. Like it might just so be a thing where it's like. So you don't think you can start a friendship with another guy in the club. in the club? Like yeah, he, it's might, highly... think, he might think you're gay, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to, like, let's be real here, bro. You don't yeah, go if to you're the... straight. If, listen, if as you... a straight man, you don't go to the club to make friends. Yeah, you go true. there to either enjoy with your boys yeah. or your people who you're with, or you're there to grab nyash. Yeah, I'm not there to pick up a new best friend. That's that's gay. That's that's no. It's I not like gay. Only, that's just dead. That's moist. I'm like doing only, that, bro. I feel like only women can do that. Yeah, because women are women are wired differently, bro. Women can go to the club in the bar and go to the bathroom and come up with three new best friends. Yeah, we, we and don't even know her last name or something. Yeah, men can't. Men can't. We can't do that. that. It's not the same, bro. Why can't we do that? Because we're not wired the same way. No, nah, there has to be a no, reason. You can't no, just say wiring. No, because the, in the in the way that mandem go to the, or some mandem or yeah, the yeah. general consensus of mandem go to the club to grab nyash. Women aren't going to the club to grab meat. Yeah, but you don't go to the club every time to grab nyash. I don't even go to the club. First and foremost, no, I'm, I'm saying not even if in you that. Did, huh? If you did, you don't just go to parties and whatever just to... No, but it's not on the forefront of like... It... All the time. Sometimes it is. Let's, let's be honest. Sometimes yeah, but at the same time, it's not It's not there. It's not one of those things like when... Oh, how can I say it? It's like, cool. If we, if I go to a motive, yeah? yeah. And then say, for example, you're telling me about this mo- one motive to, to, to reach, yeah? yeah? And then we're talking like, all right, cool. So where is it? Oh, okay. what, what type of music oh, mm. oh are, are there things like yeah. you know like are there going to be things same in that same breath I don't think women will talk to their girls and be like oh are they going to be man them there though? Like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah yeah what man them with the yeah I'm like what dreadhead and then, uh, it's not the same way oh, I feel they do no it's, it's not it's not the same you, way you hear a lot about like events where it's just like there's like 80% women and women don't like that like yeah. they do want yeah, but but what I'm saying is okay. Look, but women generally, yeah. and again, correct me if I'm. I don't even like to generalize, but it is what it is. Women generally, if there was something a women's only event or a women's only gym or a women's only club, more women will love that than a man them than man them will like man them only club or man them only this man them only that. That's a that's a cock fest. Nobody hey, wants you. that. <laughs> Bad bo and. Yeah. What, what are you doing? Drill? It's just, it's just, it's, it's just a you group session. Mandem only... Say that again. Mandem Mandem only... Only club or Mandem only gym. I guess I'm Mandem only gym. Mandem only gym is a bit different, but do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, at the same time, certain man will probably just be like, there's too much testosterone, there's too much chalk and BO in here. Like, it's just dead. Like, just I need some the culture in there, but yeah, I get what you mean. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. we... But yeah, Mandem only club. We, we want to see the other gender, the other sex. Like, I like my dreams and nightmares once, but not like five times in a club. And then you're yeah. playing BT and Rendo and all these yeah, other yeah, things. Yeah. Like, what? It'd be too much. So what? They'll, that's bro, shut down. It's, it's not a crib session. Yeah, it's not true, a crib true, session, bro. True. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Whereas girls will love that, the whole girly time and yeah, da 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 da. It's very Women different. All that stuff, yeah. And it's just because we're wired differently. And that's fine. Yeah, I guess women are a bit more sociable. But that goes to say, uncle's moving crazy. He shouldn't have, like, I if he if he asked me for advice, where can I meet some people? Bro, don't go club. Mm-mm. Go to like a sports venue or, or the go speed to dating like, thing. Yeah. Or like just do do something that you like 
Yeah. And then find out if other people that are like your age or that you you think you'll get along with are there as well. Yeah, just Do you know what I'm trying to say? Best, yeah. Club is like last resort, especially if you want to find mandem. That's the last resort. Yeah. Because personally, I'm not like unless you came with your brethren, yeah. and then me and me and your brethren become cool. Then yeah. I'm not gonna exchange socials with a random brother I don't know. Yeah. No. And even then, if even if I'm I'm not I'm probably not even gonna exchange socials with your boy like that. It's just like that's the first time we met. Maybe if I see you again. There we go. Yeah, Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's it's different. Yeah. You don't go to the club as a guy to go and meet other guy friends. Cause that yeah, that's how people get jammed up as well. In terms of the whole. He's a that word and then that's not my friend <laughs> that's not my dog <laughs> it was just one night we were both having fun in the club that's it and, and he was moving and remember how he's moving yeah exactly so like, you obviously got, like you have to be careful sometimes you in events just... and that there's, there'll be there'll be nyash yeah. and there'll be girls shaking nyash you know when they hear that glow yeah. that sexy red yeah. they'll be shaking nyash and everything and bro was like yeah. and like even like I think okay I don't want to say this in terms of like, I should have pulled him up about it. Because again, I don't know my man from nowhere. I don't know what he's yeah. on and I'm not Prince Charming in The Shining Cape yeah, yeah, and da 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 da. But like, there was a couple of times, you know when you're moving past people yeah. and you know as a guy, there's certain ways you can move past people yeah, yeah. or move, move past women yeah. without... There's a way to be a creep about it and there's a way to do it normally. And man was being a creep about it. Yeah. I caught him once, I said, huh? Yeah. And I said, yeah, that brother? Mm. Yeah. So... Do you know what I'm trying to say? Easy. It's not easy. It's, it's not easy, man. And but that's that's London for you, I guess. Bro, it's like, and like, I can't lie, that's why I don't go to club. But that that joint, mm, that was a good, that was a good night. That joint might have to see me again. And it, do you know that's rich coming from me if I want to go there again? Yeah, yeah, no, that, that was it. We're not gonna give them free promo, but it was, nah, it was a good yeah, night. Was that's why I said that joint. I was, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Yeah. I'm gonna go there again. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah, it's good vibes. Love Very talent. good vibes. A lot, a lot of talent. Vibes, vibes, vibes. Can't done. Mm. Vibes were there. Mm. I'm trying to say, all of them. Mm. All of them. Oh, cool. Let's update the playlist, man. Yo, you did this weekend, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro. No, I'm busy. I'm busy this weekend, but damn. One of got, these days. Got, got to load that up. Um. Uh, I don't even know what I'm gonna put on the playlist. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna put a pl- song on a playlist this week. <laughs> I see he's on strike of music. Because I just haven't really been listening to anything like new like that, if I'm very honest with you. Let me get What Happened to the World by Larry June. I've been going to have a weapon. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That song is a banger, man. <laughs> uh, oh my God. What happened to Durkio? <laughs> but it's locked up. What, uh, what song would you say? Uh, what Happened to the World with Larry June, The Alchemist, and Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa? Yeah, man. He's underrated, man. I didn't, know, I didn't know he was still active like that. This no, this song came out. It was on his album, Larry Jean's album. Oh, fair came enough. out last year. Fair enough. He does his features here and there, but you know that guy's clear, man. Yeah, he's good. He's too good, man. But yeah, guys, that's been another episode of the actually. Yeah, actually, no, I did a song. I'm actually not. I, <laughs> bro, there's there's nothing that I've been listening to like the same stuff, bro. Yeah. And some of the stuff I've already just put on the playlist, like it's just. You know, you get to that age where it's like. Yeah, like I just don't. Like, in terms of music, I kind of just keep some the genres that I like and the artists that I like. And mm. I know if they put a young feature out, someone else I don't know, I'll tap in. But yeah. generally, I'm not really in an exploring mood right now. Yeah, keep unk. it a stack. Yeah, Unk stage. I got called Unk at work yeah, t- yesterday by these flipping placement students, bro. You're at that stage, man. Huh? Yeah, that. you got a fake young face. <laughs> This guy's no. an old soul. <laughs> I've been tea. I'm a tea. I've been peppermint tea and stuff. I said I'm a young OG. <laughs> hey, well, don't don't not peppermint tea though. You see, no, no, no. <laughs> that's what I said. Nah, nah. Hey, listen, I get serious about my tea. Yeah, that's what I, yo, oh, cool, man. bro. Nah, I, I'll be so. One of the one of the um, placement students didn't know what mini clip was. That's crazy. Mini clips. So what were they doing at school? Studying. Telling me about one uh, website called <laughs> called what Fuzz. Or frizz or yeah, what old or so I have or, no or, or, or skip blue or <laughs> <laughs> I said skip blue, bro. I don't know what that website was. I was like, how do you not know about mini clip? Do you know how crazy that is? That's crazy. And I I realized because it's not even like this is like a work experience, yeah. like a sixteen year old or seventeen. This is a twenty year old. I think it's with mini clip. It's not like it. It's not like Nintendo where it just kept growing or one of these. You just had to be you there. You had to be there. It's still. Active now, but... Them man don't even know about Monkey Snowball, fact. 
It's crazy. Club Penguin, what? You don't probably don't know. Club about Penguin, young, new star planet, crazy. A young, a young Habbo. Come on, bro. Like, 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 like I'm not unk. These niggas are just young. young yeah. They just young, bro. Because how do you not know mini clip? I say you're arguing with someone born in 2008. Crazy. Bro, ah, <laughs> bro it's crazy. It's actually. No, I think she said she was born in 2005. Was something crazy? Oh. Which is even mad to me. Yeah, my sister's 2006. That's yeah. mad. See, I even thought they even stopped producing after like 2003. <laughs> yeah, you're ugly. Oh, it's crazy, you're bro. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, I'm done. I'm done. Finito. <laughs> cool. And so is the episode. That's another episode of Out Your Podcast. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe. Um, catch us every single week, every single Monday on Spotify, Apple, every single podcast platform on Fridays on YouTube, and then every other Wednesday, sometimes every Wednesday. Um, but on our YouTube channel, we produce like a little 10 minute, 15 minute segment just to keep y'all folks afloat. There's keep shorts there as well. Shorts there on TikTok, there, Instagram Reels, there, Facebook, everything, man. Yeah, so. man. Mids MB. J to the Izzo. We out of here. We out. Yes. We are-